Hey, it's fans, people in the webs, it is I, Soundwave SG1, your unchrasmatic boar, coming at you for a Star Trek, the official Starships collection review. Yes, I am very behind, um, due to the fact that I am still waiting for my orders. It's been like almost two months and I'm still, I think I'm about eight, I think I'm about six issues behind now. I've rang them up, they told, they're on, they told me they're on the way, but fucking, you know what, the Eagle Muscle like. Um, I've never had this. I've always been, you know, just two behind. Now I'm like four, four, I think six behind, I think. Um, and they've announced there is a convention exclusive Claude Defiant. If anybody out there can fucking grab me one, I will be very happy. I will pay you the money that they want. But if you can grab me one, fucking brilliant. And I uh, want to send it to me. Um, the links will be, you know, uh, PM me. Um, I'll put my email address here. Um, and, you know, we'll sort something out. So anyway, we're doing issue number 151, the Bomar Patrol Ship. Um, as per usual, nice glossy magazine. And the ship itself, but more on that later. Yeah. So, specification. Operated by the Bomar Sovereignty type patrol ship. In operation 24th century, location Delta Quadrant, length 14 metres. Propulsion, uh, impulse and warp engines, weaponry, energy beam torpedoes. And they've got a beautiful CG render of the ship there. Same one for the front cover, but a reversed image. That's not a bad thing. You can tell it's a reversed image because the these little prongs here are on the wrong side. Never mind. Um, they're on the wrong side on the front, but in the inside they're correct. Um, Bomar patrol ship was a versatile craft used to patrol borders and territory of the Bomar sovereignty. The Bomar were isolationists and distrustful of other races. The patrol ships were deployed in an effective deterrent to other Delta Quadrant powers entering their space. Um, by travelling through Bomar space, useless Voyager would reduce their length uh, of its return journey to the, throughout the Alpha Quadrant by three months. Um, and then we've got some images from the episode Raven itself. That's a cool image there. We've got some images there. Images there. Um, being fired on. And then, um, you know. That's yeah, pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, and then we've got the specifications on the ship as well there. The usual stuffs and things and stuffs. Uh, the bow mark claimed that every vessel that objected... That every object, every particle of dust crossed their borders was immediately identified and traced by their perimeter grid. After Seven's incursion into Burma space, the sensitivity of grid uh, increased by 37%, although Voyager was unable to penetrate it without detection. Paris and Tuvok devised a means for a shuttle to enter. <coughs> Excuse me, fog me through up. The Bomar were engaged in a difficult trade negotiation with their Delta Quadrant neighbours. Um, the Nassaudin? This race was off, uh, only referred into, to, in dialogue. Um, Tom Paris and Tuvok's solution penetrating the grid was undetected involved recalibrating the shuttle's shield to match the grid's frequency. The 68 patrol ships converging on the position... Uh, Voyager itself left Burma territory quickly to continue its journey towards Earth. This encounter was Starfleet's only known contact with the Burma. And they've got some um, designed images of the ship there, which is pretty cool. It's been more Bajor in that one. And then we're almost exactly what we want there. Um, they look like Johnny Eve, let me see. Oh, Rick Sternback, even. Um, I like the notes they've put on there. It says, like, much must match interior set, which is pretty cool. So you've got the set designers and the ship designers sort of working together. Um, that's really cool. And then you got um, Brian Fuller. I think this is Brian Fuller's first episode, I think. Uh, yeah, Raven was his first assignment, proved to be baptism of fire. Yeah, um, it's not a bad episode, actually. It's quite a good one. And then you got detecting, di directing Ravens. Uh, and you've got sort of, you know, you've got production images there. You've got images from on the sound stage, and then you've got the finished shot there. And then you've got, you know, the finished shot there. And then like it must be either previs or a, an earlier shot to see how the, the the image would actually see on screen. Um, and then we've got some more production shots. We've got Seven and Jacoby on the 
in front of a blue blue screen there, and then you've got them on set, and then beaming up, and then you've got the uh, Raven as well, and uh, seven inch go, uh, seven inch go, eh? seven and two Vok even. And then we've got on screen first appearance Raven, designed by Rick Sternbach. Raven was featured in flashbacks in Seven of Nine's childhood uh, to a young Annika Hansen aboard the USS Raven. <coughs> Excuse me. The flashback sequences, uh, Annika was played by Arika Lynn Bryan, um, following Jerry Ryan as the adult Seven of Nine and Hanson and Hanson in Raven. A third actress later played the character in the feature length season, fifth season episode, Dark Frontier. The young Annika was played by Cantlin Peterson, who continues to act today, act, write and direct today. Um... Scenes between Seven of Nine and Neelix taking place on Voyager's Mess Hall were among the first scenes filmed between Jerry Ryan and Ethan Phillips. Since Jerry Ryan's arrival on the show, later admitted finding it very difficult to get through the comedic scene with a straight face or making eye contact with Phillips, who would instantly make her laugh. Thus, tears are rolling down my face. She later said, Citizen Kane was the basis for Seven of Nine's discovery in the um, in Raven's. The Raven's nameplate in her past, I was struck by Citizen Kane, image of Rosebud, Bran and Braga said following the episode production. And then we've got um, the next issue, the Excelsior, still waiting for it. Uh, and then we've got an image on the back. So, we will flip the camera around and take a look at this bad boy. See you in the mo. And there we have the ship. A uh, very nice ship, I think you'll agree. Um, so we'll take it off its standard for now, I'll put that over there. Um, very nice very very nice i really like this ship a lot um come on focus you twats come on come on there we go you've got some really nice panel detail along the forward section of the hull there and you've got these um um sort of unsprue parts almost um so all these little gaps in there they're really cool um but like i say you've got some really nice design on there so a bit of dust on there um i'm not sure what these are because they're only on one side um could be communications array probably. Um and then you've got some nice uh, I quite like them. They've got a kind of, kind of like an iridescent shine to them. Should be clear plastic, but there you go. Um same with the warp cells there. Um very nice, very, very, very good. Um like I say, I like these split sort of panel like sort of conduits, I guess. Um I guess that's maybe the hatch at the back there. Um and on the bottom We've got some more warp nacelles details. Um and again more more detailing. Um yeah, it's it's a very nice ship this. A very, very nice ship. Um should you get this one? I think you should. If you're a Voyager fan, oh, dropping it all over. If you're a Voyager fan, um you should definitely get this. This this would uh you know, go alongside your, your Delta Flyer and things like that. Um this is a really cool ship and I love the design of it. Um, it's almost, it's, you could almost put this in Star Wars, you know what I mean? It's one of those type of ships. It's a really cool design. I love the warp nacelles embedded into the wings there. And I like the fact that the Bomar don't build big ships, they build lots of little ships. You know, um, that's a really cool, because usually on Star Trek, they never patrol ship. It's usually smaller than the hero ship, uh, unless it's the Defiant, obviously. But I mean... They took the opposite approach. They instead of building loads, you know, a small number of big ships, they'll build a fuckload of little ships, and I like that idea. Um, but it's very nice, and I, I just love this panel detail, especially along the front here. Ooh, missed it. Uh, especially along the front, all these different panels that sort of fit together but don't at the same time. And you got some Aztec up at the top there, and you got this this um, detail carry over carrying over all on the back there, and that. Um, it's just a lovely ship. It's a lovely ship, and I was really glad I got it when it came. So, as per usual, you get the stand, the Burma Patrol ship. Yeah, there's a few bits of crumbs on there. I've had toast. <laughs> so, um, and it fits on the and it fits on the stand. Thus, very nice, very nice, very nice. I think you'll agree. Um, so, the usual. Um, 
If you like what I do, why not consider subscribing and hit that notification bell to tell me I've got new videos up. Give me a big thumbs up on the channel, helps the algorithm and stuff like that. And um, if you like what I do and like to see me, this channel expand and become and grow and become bigger and bigger and bigger, why not consider subscribe, uh, donating to my Patreon? The links will be um, up in the corner there and um, I'll appreciate that a lot. And so join me next time for another review. Um, and I'll catch you all in the Delta Quadrant. Adios.